Welcome back. I'm James. Devin's helped me out. And today we are talking angles, specifically angles off of punches. These are some of the ways you can use punches to hide your footwork and get good angles that you can land additional strikes from while also staying safe at the same time. We're going to go over two different examples. One of them is going to be building off of the lead hand. The other are going to be off the rear. The reason I'm not saying specific punches is because I'm going to give you guys a few different examples and show you how you can use them off of any of the punches in question. So first part is two lead hand punches. In this case, it's going to start with the jab and then we're going to follow up with a different shot. During that second shot, that's when we add our footwork in. So quickly listed off, these are the combinations. It's going to be either a double jab, jab hook, jab uppercut, and any of those can go either to the head or to the body. Now the footwork itself is pretty simple. I step in off my second shot, and then I am going to load up the weight on my lead leg and push off and step out on my second shot. Now, as I just showed, that can be done off the jab. I can jab, step across with my hook, jab, step across as I throw the uppercut. But the key is, again, pushing off this lead leg and using that to get me into position. So in practice, it looks a little bit like this. We're gonna go back and forth. Jab, step off with the second one. Devin goes, jabs, steps off with the second one. This one again, I'm gonna jab, step across with the hook. Devin goes, jab, step across with that hook. Each of these motions is adding a little bit more power and changing our angle. So the next one is jab, step off with the uppercut. He goes, jab, step off with the uppercut. Now, when you're doing these in practice, just like we were doing, you wanna go back and forth. That way you are practicing both your offense and working your defensive skills at the same time. Now, as you get more comfortable with them, you mix it up. You don't just do the same shots. You start when you're getting used to them going one by one by one. And then once you're good and comfortable, you mix them up. And that looks a bit like this. So that way you mix the shots up and you both train better offense and you train better defense because it's not that same two shots every time. You mix up the order, that way it's a little bit harder to compute and you build more defensive skills off of it. With that first example, we were moving towards the closed side. That being the side where your lead shoulder and lead arm are. Whereas the open side is gonna be where the rear hand is positioned and the open side of your face is available. We were just moving towards the closed side. Now we are gonna change angles off of the rear hand, and this time we're going towards the open side. So we're gonna keep those two punches we were doing before. You take these drills and you build them off of each other. So it's that same double jab, jab hook, etc. But now you add an extra rear punch on the end. Much like those lead hand punches, I have a few different techniques I can use to get off on that angle. We'll start simple. Again, I'm gonna double jab my way in, and then I'm going to step off with my cross. Now notice the footwork. I'm lifting my lead leg, loading off of my rear, and stepping off line as I come in with my punch. I'm not going straight in. I am purposefully angling off and getting off center as I throw that punch. The reason being is if I'm going straight in and hopping in like that, it's very easy for him to meet me on the way in and I run into a very hard shot. So I wanna make sure that I am taking my head off center line by using my footwork. So I'll double jab my way in, hop step out on that cross. Devin goes to me, that double jab, step out on that cross. Again, using your footwork to get your head off center line rather than slipping, which in terms of savat and kickboxing as a whole, it's a little risky. Now that's the cross. We can use our overhand, the body hook, or the uppercut the same way. So that means you drill it just like the first one. You start with those first few examples, then you mix it up. So mixed up, it looks a little bit like this.
So each time as we go back and forth, we use those lead hand punches to get us into range and we step off with the rear. Again, you can use your cross, the uppercut, the overhand, all punches where it's very difficult for me to be right in front of him and wind up this uppercut, boom, this big overhand. There's a lot of opportunities for him to counter. So I get off that line, step off, gives me a safer lane so I don't run into that punch or that counter or whatever it might be. So while you're training this, make sure you're mixing up your strikes. Use that framework, those two lead punches and then a rear punch. If you're more experienced and more comfortable, don't stick to just those few techniques. Make sure you practice it a little more naturally so you don't necessarily know what's coming back at you. That way you can train your defense that much better. The last example we're gonna go over is putting these two things together. I'm gonna to use a combination to illustrate it, but again, train it in the same way. Take the framework and then make it less specific, more general, that way it feels more like sparring. In this case, the combination is gonna be as follows. I'm gonna double jab, throw my rear cross to the body, my lead hook to the head, that low rear kick, a midline to the body, and then the chasse frontal to finish. Now the angle changes are happening twice now. I'm double jabbing, but I do that same step off as I hit the cross to the body. Again, making sure I'm dropping my level, keeping a solid stance. Then I'm heading back the other direction, stepping across with this hook. This brings me all the way to the other side of his body. I continue that angle, kicking the leg. I follow up to the body and then finish with the chasse frontal, ideally to push him out to space. So it ends up looking like this. Devin comes back to me, that double jab, step off, step off, kick. Kick, kick. Again, as we're following up with those kicks, I'm making sure I'm continuing to take that angle. I'm not moving back on the center line. I angle off, angle off, and keep taking that angle. Just like that. So you make sure that once you have that angle, you wanna do as much as you can to keep it. So always try and add on a few extra strikes. The last thing I'm gonna go over is a way you can frame that in more of a sparring context. Turn it into a theme. Two lead punches with an angle change, followed by a rear punch and an angle change, and then a few additional strikes on top of that. Take drills like that, use them. They're great for your beginners, they're great for getting people comfortable with sparring, and it also provides that degree of randomness that you really need to be able to train effectively. In any case, Questions, comments, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Yes, sir. You're welcome.